Hi guys, my name is Mrs. Bueno Cruz and I am a Beacon Community Impact Health Coordinator. And then, hey everyone, I'm Mr. Matt. I'm also a community health coordinator. And so Mrs. Bueno Cruz and I, our job day in and day out is to work with kids, to work with adults, and to teach them ways to live happier and healthier lives. And so uh, one way that we're doing it is through our digital citizenship program that you guys are experiencing right now. And so let's talk about what our lesson is today. Would you like to share a little bit about that, Mrs. Bueno Cruz? Yes. So obviously uh, we are living in a digital world right now where you guys are probably on your phones a lot. You're probably on your Chromebooks a lot. You're just on digital, 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 because that's just the world that we live in today. But one of the things that we're going to talk about that I think is really, really important is the digital drama that comes up sometimes when we are on our phones or Chromebooks or any type of social media. So our lesson for today is called Digital Drama Unplugged. Right, and Mrs. Buena Cruz is totally right. There is always some sort of digital drama and it's not just with teens or people in middle school. Even adults are engaging in digital drama. I can't tell you how many times I see digital drama on Facebook, on Instagram, all sorts of media online. So this is a lesson that is important for anyone. So let's talk about what our objectives look like today. So um, first, we have a leading question that we want you to be uh, reflecting on first. So when there's a fight or an argument at school or in public, how do people usually usually react? So what do you how would you react, Mrs. Bueno Cruz, if you're seeing a fight or an argument at school? So or I see that, yeah, I see this happen a lot in the hallways. Um, if they see someone arguing, somebody else, a fight, a fight, and everybody runs down the hallway and they're egging it on. Right, and they're not going to do anything to stop it, usually. Oftentimes, people just like to watch, right? And so <laughs> Mrs. Boyle Cruz, she put in this gif, and I think it's very appropriate um, while we, I think most of us realize that digital drama isn't usually a good thing, uh, sometimes people like to watch the drama, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, or the drama, it's entertaining to us, but when we think about the people that are engaged in that drama, is it helping them in the long run? Probably not. And watching them or um, being a, uh, a bystander isn't going to help the situation either. So. Um, Mrs. Bueno Cruz, do you think there's anything different between a fight or an argument at school versus a fight or an argument online? Well, obviously, if it's in person, face to face, it could get physical as opposed to online. But one thing that they do have in common is that people like to egg it on. That's people, totally we're, right. Right. We're human. It's natural for us to be attracted to the drama. So as soon as you see something going on, like I said, in the hallway, or if you're seeing it on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook, right away, people like to egg it on and make comments like, ooh, I can't believe she said that, or ooh, are you going to let him right. say that about you? And then it ends up on everyone's group chat, right? Screenshots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we want to give you some tools about what are the appropriate ways or what are the right ways to react when you see digital drama online and ways so that you can avoid getting pulled into the drama too. Because maybe there's some of you that have been a part of the drama or some of you who watch the drama. So we want to give you the tools so you can be successful and not get pulled into the drama. So our question for today, how can we de-escalate digital drama so it doesn't go too far? Right, and on that note, Mr. Matt, mm -hmm. what is drama? What does that even mean? Right, um, let's talk real quick. Digital drama is when people are using their devices, their apps, or websites to start or further a conflict between people. So maybe it's something that started at school, yep. but it's something that someone brought online. So I'm trying to think of an example of digital drama. Do you have any ideas of digital drama, Mrs. Bueno Cruz? Maybe things that you've seen in school, an example to, that really... Yeah, uh, oh my gosh, I could give I could I could give countless examples. Um, so let's say like Mr. Matt said something happened at school and it probably really wasn't that big of a deal and someone posts something about somebody at school. Um, I'm trying to think of something like, for example, 
oh, did you see what so-and-so said to so-and-so at school today? Let's mm -hmm. say, let's say uh, Malik and, and, and Jose. Oh, Jose didn't really do anything about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. Jose probably just walked away from the situation. Let him but off his shoulder, maybe. Right, right. But as soon as somebody gets on that on that phone, sends out that that message that Jose didn't do anything about it, someone can egg it on and say, "Oh, he's a punk. Why didn't he do anything about it?" And there goes all the the, the messages back and forth between other people who had nothing to do with that situation, and that's where drama can start. Right, and I think what really is interesting to me is that people will start making comments or um, making um, up ideas that maybe they don't even know what the situation was really. They just know what they might have seen. They might not know the whole story. And then they jump to conclusions and then people just assume that that's the truth between those two people. You know what I mean, Mrs. Bueno Cruz? Right. Right. So so again, again, basically they're egging it on. They don't really know the, 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 the true situation. Um, maybe there are some bystanders as well, not really helping the situation, and it just becomes a bigger issue than what it really needs to be. Right, and I, I think that's something that we all need to remember that what you see might not be the whole story, so you can't jump to conclusions like that. So real quick for you guys, we have this video, and it's just talking to a variety of students, talking about what sort of digital drama are they seeing online, but also how do they deal with it? Because I know I see a lot of drama on Facebook, on Instagram, and even though I'm not a part of it, it can be kind of stressful to see people fighting with each other, not saying kind words to each other. Um, so how, what can I do to keep my peace, but also maybe ways to de-escalate the situation? So while you guys are watching, listen to the ways that these students deal with digital drama, and then Mrs. Bueno Cruz and I will discuss afterward. People fight over text all the time. You know, digital drama is a thing. There are ways to avoid digital drama, but I think it's in a, it's mainly inevitable. You need to like get ready to like have something be said that you maybe maybe you won't like. On social media, you know, everything social-wise gets a bit more intense. It just causes so much unnecessary drama, I would say. Sometimes I need to take a break from it, cause sometimes it's too much for me. And then if there's like drama going on, I'll set it aside. And even though there are steps that we can take to reduce it, it's not gonna end. You can say anything over text, which you would never actually say in real life. It's so much easier to fight with your friend over the phone than it is to fight with your friend in person. That's a new thing. People can just hide behind, you know, certain accounts and certain places on social media and just say whatever they want to say. We kind of have this disconnect that I think sometimes social media can cause where it develops like a almost a tolerance for a lack of empathy. It's really important to think about how other people are going to take it because whatever comment you make could be seen by potentially thousands or millions of people. Now more than ever where somebody makes a rude comment and they get put on blast for it. You don't see the other person's reactions, so you just keep on going. You don't know if the person is sad. You don't know if they're angry. You don't know what they're thinking about you. Social media can be, can turn into sort of a negative space when there's a lot of like anonymous posting no one else knows who that person is, so it creates a lot of like tension and drama within friend groups. In the comment sections of posts that you know are viral or popular, I'll see someone voicing an opinion and all of a sudden there'll be a thread of even hundreds of comments, people just arguing and arguing and not even knowing each other. You could get insulted very easily, like on your appearance, on your like just anything that you say, anything that you put out onto the internet. Something so small can escalate to something so big and as it escalates, the topic can completely change to something that's really big. People that I know actually worry about how many followers they have compared to other people, if they're not getting as many messages. When I see like the people around me getting into drama on social media, kind of makes me not want to be on social media. It just seems easier to not be a part of that. 
I have a couple of friends who are very close, but they fight a lot. I'll get screenshots of their conversation from both of the people just being upset and sending long paragraphs about how upset they are. And instead of talking to each other about it in person, so I've suggested both of them multiple times. I would say I'm more comfortable talking face to face because like on social media, it's hard to like communicate like a sense of realness and like emotions. The best way to deal with digital drama is to leave what's happening. Maybe it's a group chat that you're in, just to leave that because the more that people talk about it, the more that people are gonna think about it and the more you might get into it and you might say more things. It is really easy, easy to get your feelings hurt, but you know, you just gotta like, it's just kind of, they're just hiding behind a screen basically. I think the best way to deal with digital drama and help mediate it is first of all, I always suggest talking in person because that's always easier. Avoiding confrontation is something that I'm trying to be aware that I don't do. A way that I can just disassociate myself from the negativity is to just not respond. All right, so uh, that was a really good video um, talking about why digital drama happens and then different ways that these students deal with it. So Mrs. Bueno Cruz, why do you think digital drama can happen? I think we've sort of discussed a bit, but after watching this video, do you have anything to add on that point? Oh yeah, definitely. So I think what happens is, and again, we're only human, um, that people get really, comfortable and people get kind of brave and they say things in a text message or on, on, on digital screens that they would never say to someone's face. And I think that's one of the biggest problems we have with digital drama is it's so easy to hide behind that screen and, and type in whatever it is that's on your mind um, because you can't see that person face to face. Mm -hmm. And um, if if someone were to totally take that screen away and ask themselves before they type anything, could I, and would I really say this to someone's face? And I think what happens a lot too is you're not able to see that person face to face. So you're not actually seeing what kind of feelings that they're feeling, you know, you can't see them. And uh, uh, something that you need to ask yourself is, if I were to see them face to face, how am I hurting them? Meaning emotionally, because you can't see them face to face. Um, also something that um, happens um, behind the screen or what happens with digital drama is something so small. And I think we talked about this earlier, something that's so small, something that's so tiny can turn into something so big because mm -hmm. people just keep egging it on and type these messages and respond um, to the drama that doesn't really need to be drama because again, they're hiding behind the screen. Mm -hmm. Right, I think you hit that right on the head, Mrs. Quinn, uh, right, right on the head, uh, right on there because you're hitting it out of the park. Um, I think a big thing is people lack empathy because they don't see that person. So you're, I totally agree with you there. And then also it's just like, you can't see what this person, how they're reacting. And oftentimes people don't even have a name associated with the account. They'll just be anonymous accounts saying rude things, right? Um, so that's really an important discussion to have. And so let's talk about ways to de-escalate. So say there's some drama going online, maybe it's on Snapchat, maybe it's on Instagram, maybe it's on Facebook if you're, if you're on Facebook, right? So let's talk about what it means to de-escalate first. We need to know what that means. So if you're going to de-escalate the situation, that means you're going to lessen the intensity or anger in a conflict, right? And so drama can arise because there is this conflict between maybe two people or a couple people. And maybe that, dra that, um, that conflict, maybe it is an actual conflict, but if it were settled in person, it would have been settled right there and then. But if it's online, I've seen people, their friends will come and attack the other people or they'll just end up saying mean things about the person. So what can you do to de-escalate the situation if you're the person, a part of the drama, or what can you do to de-escalate the situation if you're one of those people on the sidelines watching it happen? 
And I think this is so important, Mr. Matt, because um, I think a lot of us don't know how to get out of the situation. We don't know how to de-escalate. So I think it's important that we let you guys know here are some ways on how you can de-escalate the situation because you may not know. And then also something I think is really important, maybe you aren't able to de-escalate the situation, but that doesn't mean you have to be a part of it. Sometimes it's okay just to like put the phone down and step away because what's happening, it might be out of your control, but you can still look out for yourself, look out for number one and make sure that your mental health is prioritized and put first. And, right. you, don't, and you don't want to get involved in this this drama that maybe has nothing to do with you. So just get yourself out of that situation, which leads us into our, how do we de-escalate tips? Yeah, so what are ways that we can de-escalate this situation? And so one is taking a break from being online. So that doesn't mean that you have to just get off completely, but maybe you give like the rest of the day to see if this situation just kind of blows over or it becomes less intense. So you taking yourself away from the drama and prioritizing your mental health and not getting stressed out about a situation. Right, and you, right. sorry, Mr. Matt, and you're right. Um, I have two daughters, one's in high school and one's in college now. And I remember hearing one of them say, mom, I just need a break from my phone. And I'm like, well, why? And she said, there's just too much drama. It has nothing to do with me. It's dumb. It's just gonna get into something bigger. It's giving me a headache. I just, I, I just need a break. Mm -hmm. All right, this next one. Did you want to take this one? Sure. Mm -hmm. Show empathy for others online. This all has to go back with feelings. Um, I talked about this a little while ago. Uh, you're not seeing that person face to face. So you don't know what, what what's happening on the other line. They might be, you know, showing that they are this brave person coming back with all these these comebacks um, on the messages, but may, they're, they're probably really hurting, you know? So, you know, you showing empathy, showing that you care by not responding to the drama or um, taking that break. Mm -hmm. And then I also think it is a good example. Maybe if you're the first person to show empathy, you might be showing everyone else how to show empathy too. And that might help deescalate the situation too, by being that example for others by saying, oh, well, we can't say these things about this person because what do you think they're going, how do you think they're going to feel about all of this? So being able to be um, aware of others' feelings, definitely. Um, another another way to deescalate would be not to engage with those adding to drama. Because sometimes maybe you felt like there's drama going on and someone's trying to pull you into the drama and they want you to start say, piling it on, right? But you don't have to be a part of that drama. So maybe there's something going on in your friend group, maybe something going on in the group chat. You don't have to engage. You could, uh, you could just say, hey, I don't wanna um, be a part of this situation. I'm just gonna set my phone up for the night, right? Um, do you have any ideas about how not to engage, Mrs. Bueno Cruz? Yeah, avoid the confrontation, don't respond. You know, just letting them know, hey, especially if it's within a group of friends and that happens a lot where you're friends one day and mm -hmm. then somebody might get upset and turn their backs on the other friend and they want you to turn your back as well. Just letting them know like, hey, I'm friends with all of you guys. I don't want to, um, I don't want to add to the drama or talking to the friend saying, hey, why don't you guys work it out? Talk about it. Maybe it's just, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's just something that's not really a big deal, but you're not going to know unless you talk to them. Right. And I think that's a really hard situation when the drama's in a friend group because you don't want to try to favor one friend over the other. You want to be a good friend of both of your friends. So trying to be that neutral person, that person in the middle that isn't ruling either way. Right. Oh, and so you already said this one. This is uh. one, but avoid confrontation. <laughs> and that's what one that one of the students on the video said, too. Because I feel like sometimes people get all worked up when they're going back and forth. And it's like right then and there, like I'm typing furiously on my phone. Um, but if people just take a minute to just think about what they're saying. I know something um, people always tell me is like, don't, don't send any messages when you're angry. Because you might say something that you don't mean just because you're in a, like a really like worked up moment. Right. And 
Mr. Matt. Mm -hmm. um, it also goes back to sometimes when you send a message, it's how the other person reads it. How do oh, they receive? Right. How do they receive it? Because I know I've been sent a message, and I I'll ask someone like, "What do you think this means? Are they upset with me? Are they angry with me?" And then when I speak to them face to face, they're like, "No, I I didn't mean anything by that." It's how, you know, people misread mm -hmm. because again, you're not talking to that person face to face. You don't know what kind of emotion um, is portrayed through a text message. Yeah, you're totally right. And I think um, I know a lot of teens, they love to use sarcasm. And the hard thing about sarcasm is you can't tell sarcasm in a text unless someone's being extremely obvious. And so you have to be very mindful of how you come across in text because people don't know your tone. They don't know if you're kidding or not. So that's something we want you guys to be mindful of. Um, another way to de-escalate the drama is just to set the drama aside. So um, similar to taking a break, but just kind of withdrawing from the situation saying, hey, I value my peace. I value my mental health. I don't want to get drawn into this. And then Mrs. Buena Cruz, did you want to take this one? Oh, one of my favorite ones. Just turn right. off your phone. I know that might be hard for some of you because I know sometimes I can't live without my phone, but just taking a break from your phone, turn it off because if you just kind of put it on silent or vibrate, you're still going to be tempted to mm -hmm. pick up that phone. Um, just turn it off, clear your mind, get up, go outside, take a breather, do something else. Just turn off your phone. Right. Yeah. I did that the other day. I just left my phone at home and I went on a walk and I just felt so much better not having to be on my phone and responding to people. It's nice to have that little break. So that's really important for you guys to do, whether there's digital drama or not. Um, and then I also think if there's something going on in your group messages or it's on a certain app, like you can turn off notifications yep. over those messages so you don't have to see them and get notified every time someone adds to the drama on a message or if it's on a specific app like Instagram or Snapchat, maybe just delete the app for a little while yep. so that you can just take some time to worry about you. Right, and like I mentioned before, I know you guys probably think it's gonna be the end of the world if you turn off your phone. I promise, just just take, tr take baby steps, turn it off for like five minutes. It's the first time and, and you'll see how much, how much of a, of a breather, how much, stress you might take off just because you turned it off for just a little bit mm -hmm. and then also like think about what you could be doing if your phone is turned off so there might be things that you enjoy doing that don't involve your phone or maybe new things you want to try that help you relax like just listening to music going for a walk painting drawing those sorts of activities that can help you chill out and get away from that digital drama um, the last way to de-escalate the situation. So maybe it's become a situation where it's just gotten really dramatic. Nothing is, nothing good is coming out of this situation. You need to um, notify an adult, especially if there's something going on online where um, people are getting threats or unkind words are being said. Um, if that's the sort of situation that's going on, you need to tell someone, maybe that's um, an adult at home. Maybe that's a teacher at school because um, in those situations you need to let an adult know because we don't want anyone to get hurt physically or mentally right and I think that goes back to showing empathy where um, like Mr. Matt said if there's something going on where someone's threatening someone else or maybe if you think about what if that were me if somebody was saying these things to me how is that going to make me feel how, how do you think that other person is feeling they're probably feeling really bad about themselves um, they're probably feeling, well, maybe I'm scared now because this person says, uh, said that they're going to uh, fight me or hurt me physically. It is important to tell a trusted adult. And it's not that you're being a tattletale. Please don't think that. Right. You're, you're looking out for an individual who might need that help. So mm -hmm. please don't ever think I'm going to be a snitch if I tell someone about this, this drama that's online. Um, no, it's not about being a snitch. It's about helping someone out who probably really mm. needs it. They just don't know how to go about the situation. You're totally right. All right, so let's talk about a scenario. So I'm sure you guys have in your mind some ideas of maybe digital drama that you've experienced or maybe things around school. Um, but we just wanted to go through this situation right here and think about what could we do to de-escalate the situation, whether we're part of the drama or we're watching the drama. 
Um, so let's talk about what the scenario is. So let's say there's a group of girls at your school. They were featured in the newspaper about the middle school, and they used the picture of these girls that you see, right? Um, and so um, someone posts, it looks like a tweet. And so Mike B, he doesn't like that they're in the, in the social media post, but he isn't. So he says, what about the rest of us, right? And then it starts to be the situation where other people start chiming in and they say, oh, teacher's pets. What is that? Shaking my head or always jumping in front of the camera. So the, would you say these are helpful comments, Mrs. Bueno Cruz? Not at all. There right. goes, again, it go, there goes someone egging on a, 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 a situation that has nothing to do with drama. Um, if, if it looks like it's Mike B that posted, what about the rest of us? Mm -hmm. You know, um, Mike B probably should have went up to one of the girls face to face and say, hey, how'd you guys get in that picture? Right, he doesn't we, know the situation. Right, for all we know, it probably wasn't the girls who posted it. It was probably a teacher who posted it, just right. thought, hey. This is a good picture. We yes. Can use it. And yeah, they might not know that they were even featured in the article. And so you see this could just turn into a situation where these girls might respond negatively back, right? So how could we stop this drama right here as someone in the situation? What would you do, Mrs. Buena Cruz? Well, like I just mentioned a little bit ago, mm -hmm. might be, or maybe one of the girls, let's call one of them uh, uh, Samantha. Samantha could have, instead of Samantha responding online, on online mm -hmm. maybe she could message Mike separately or if she sees him at school the next day be like hey mike what's up what what was up with that tweet that you uh tweeted the other day and maybe explain the situation like hey we weren't the one who who posted that picture you know kind of talk to mike about it and ask him why is he feeling so negative about it mm -hmm. yeah i think that's really important the in-person aspect of it because if they just commented back on that thread, who knows, those other students might go after them. They might have just kind of like this, they're shouting insults at each other. So I think doing it in person is really important. Or if they do just like a direct message to Mike too. Mm -hmm. And so what if this situation gets out of hand where Mike doesn't really want to engage? What can these girls do to um, get out of the situation entirely? I think uh, maybe talking to the teacher who posted this, like saying, hey, I think Mike got his feelings hurt. Maybe you could talk to Mike about it. Um, yeah, just just talking to, to an adult to let that mm -hmm. adult know, like, I think Mike's hurt by this. What can we do to let Mike know that it wasn't intentional? It wasn't trying to hurt anyone's feelings. Right. And then also they can just make sure that they just step away from the situation. Maybe just don't look at their phones. Don't look at twit. Don't look at that post. Put it behind them. That sort of situation where they're just saying, hey, I'm not going to engage. Because usually when you engage with someone, that, that's just giving them the power to engage back with you. Which I think, yeah, if someone says something weird online to me, I'm like, uh, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to respond back. Because that's just going to open yourself up for discussion. All right, and so that pretty much concludes our presentation today, but we wanna leave you with one last blurb that we are kind and courageous, and by we, I mean you guys, you young, you, you young folks, that you're kind and courageous and that we challenge you, if you're online, make sure that you are looking out for each other, that you're making sure that your interactions with others are respectful and kind. Uh, do you have anything to add, Mrs. Bueno Cruz? No, I think you hit it right on the nail, Matt. Yeah, Mr. you guys Matt. are getting to the point where you need to look out for each other and that you need to make sure that we're um, prioritizing our mental health because we know that words can really hurt people. And yeah, maybe you don't realize what you say is hurtful, but you just need to be mindful of those things. So we challenge you guys uh, to show positivity. There's already enough negativity in the world. We want you to uh, flood, the, uh, flood your interactions online with positivity. So we'll see you next time for the next lesson and we wish you the best. Okay, guys? Yeah, have a good day. See you guys later. Bye.